think officially that was the by, by the odds makers the biggest win of an underdog in UFC history. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I stumbled upon the odds uh, last week when I was trying to bet. I was trying to make some money off the fights last week, and I was like, "Damn, they really done me." So you know, had to, that was a little bit of more fuel in the tank for me. Is that any? moment where you see the odds are so far apart that you think, well, maybe this woman's really good, or do you just know in yourself and your own abilities that, and you don't have that into your head? Um, I know that uh, my training partners, you know, the my training partners have given me smoke and given me heat that she couldn't, and uh, I believed in my training, and, uh, you know, not to take away from Maria, uh, she was... You know, she had a great she had a great blitz. We were expecting her to come out hot, and she like she did. Uh, but we were prepared for that. Someone bet twenty five thousand dollars on her. Twenty five thousand on her. Yeah. Damn. You owe them an apology. <laughs> Sorry, um, man. If you bet twenty five thousand on me, hit me up, cash at me, give me some of that. Did uh, did you feel <laughs> did you feel she had an adrenaline dump? Did you know in the second round that she was just completely gassed, or do you think you actually heard her to make her gas? I think it was a little bit of uh, the two. You know, I think that she started to get uh, gas a little bit, and then you know me landing my big strikes on top of that. You know, it it really didn't give her a chance. Um, you know, but uh, you know, good for her um, uh, for coming out there with me, and you know. I respect anybody that's willing to get in there and share the cage with me. And, and so what's next for you? Is there an opponent you'd like to share the cage with next? What have you got in mind for the next step? Um, an extra large pizza and a blue moon. I'll probably share the cage with next. <laughs> I understand. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I had it, they showed the package right before the fight started. I didn't realize that she had called you out after her last win. I must have missed that. Yeah. What we saw was an example of when keeping it real goes wrong. How's it feel to humble a, a young up and comer that tried to call you out? That's funny. Uh, me and my coaches have been talking about that serving some humble pie up. And, uh, you know, I hate, hate to do it that way, but, you know, it's it's a fight game. It's They wanted an underdog, and I brought the dog out tonight. My coaches let me off the leash, and that's what we got. I haven't been able to find anybody who knows the backstory to that. What, what is the reason for her calling your name specifically? Um, I think they offered me a short notice fight for her at the beginning of the pandemic. And uh, yeah, with COVID and, and seeing people testing positive all over the place, I wasn't in any any hurry to go out there and get sick. And I hadn't, you know, I don't think anybody had access to their coaches, training partners, gyms. You know, I, I, have, I have to be smart about this. So. I believe in fate. I believe everything happens for a reason. I believe that we met when we were supposed to meet for a reason and, and uh, worked out for me. And uh, earlier we talked about her uh, kind of having an adrenaline dump with you on the second round. So was it your game plan just to come out real fast? Because you came out with a real uh, strong pace. You had on the ground. The second time you got on the ground, you basically just muscled her down. It was, it was, I was like, okay, this is, uh, is going to be a grimy fight here. Yeah. When I got her down the second time, I was like, Sean, if you don't finish this shit <laughs> right now, I was like, this is a, uh, this is a, uh, this is money right here. This is this is easy work. So um, yeah, we knew she was gonna come out hot, uh, and we knew that I had to be calm and composed and use my experience. Um, you know, this this is a uh, this is a weird setup. You know, it's we're in COVID, the UFC, and we got we still, although we have we don't have the crowd. This is still the biggest MMA promotion in the world. So there's a lot there's a lot of nerves that goes into this. So, you know, we work a lot of mental training. And I think that, I know that that was a great advantage for me tonight. Just speak to that, if you would, real quick, the Apex. That's a different experience. What was it like for you? Uh, that cage was a little small. <laughs> I realized that when I, when I got in and I was like, damn, we're damn near touching gloves when we we're standing on either of our sides of the cage. So, um, you know, it was it worked out for me. You know, I, I wanted to be the pressure fighter tonight, and uh, what I really want to do is just show my range. You know, and show the different the different aspects of my game. You know, my ground, my stand up. Um, you know, going for submission attempts, being the bully. Um, you know, that that definitely is something that I want to continue to show. 
Shauna, congratulations, Jim Greeshaber, Cage Side Seat. That's a long six months, right? Because you win your first one, but then you lose three in a row. And you have to be thinking, man, I, I fought so hard to get here, and you don't know what's going to happen, and there are things like cuts. And, you know, just want to ask you about those six months and what you did to stay focused to regroup and kind of get back to being you, and now you're back in the win column. Yeah. Um, you know, I know I talk about my team a lot, but, you know, I, I really got to give credit where credit is due. My coaches, they're not only physical coaches, they're mental coaches. And I think that, um, you know, the, the dynamic that we have in our, in our gym, uh, amongst the coaches, amongst my teammates, I think that's what keeps that, keeps that uh, positive energy going. Just expand on that if you would a little bit, because most of us and people watching would never know what that's like as a pro athlete. It's just you, you have a team around you, but in terms of achieving that dream, and then you're wondering if it's gonna be there, and then you just got like, every fight is another opportunity for you to prove who you are, but it could all come to an end anytime. Can you talk about that feeling, going back and forth like that? Yeah, um, I, I, I'm a big believer in, in energy and positive energy, and you know, you can sit here and focus on the negative and say, oh my God, I've taking three losses in a row oh my god you know this could be it for me uh, I wasn't thinking like that all I was thinking of what was ahead of me and um, you know uh, we said before we walked out is you know we're burning the boats you know meaning uh, you know it's one way in one way out and that was through her and that's how we took it you know even in the fight when I felt you know a little bit of static nah we're there's there's only one outcome and, and, and we already knew it was going to be, it was just focusing on the journey. And then the last one for me, can you just talk about how much of a role the visualization you talked about in your interview with John, how much, how that worked for you, what you saw when you were doing it, and what that whole process is like? I think the biggest thing, uh, especially when you're fighting on a stage this big, is the uncertainty, and that took that away. You know, we, we, we've already been here, we already saw it, we already saw me walking out, her walking out, us meeting in the middle, her coming out hot. We've already experienced it. And uh, yeah, nobody out there better take my visualization tactic. That's that's our thing. <laughs> Can I just get a couple barks real quick? Woo, woo. Underdog, woo. I hope that doesn't become my thing, man, because I can't, my bark is like a little uh, Yorkie. <laughs> <laughs> you keep winning like that, it doesn't matter. There we go. Congrats. Thank you, guys. One more last one again, congrats on the big win. Thank you. Tonight has been like this like rocky theme with people rallying back. Welcome to the danger zone. I'm sorry if I missed it. <laughs> you can hear it. Were you hurt at all when she had top control and was just working really around and found that all? No, um, we've worked, me and my uh, jujitsu coach, the Lord, we've worked a lot of uh, bad positions. We've worked a lot of good positions and, and how to weather the storm and how to control. Um, Shoot, our whole team, our, all, all of our jiu-jitsu coaches, all of our ground coaches, our striking coaches, we're, they all coordinate, they're on the same level. Um, we, we talk about the dangers of, of different positions that our opponents can have, how we can capitalize and turn it around. So I think just the preparation, it was there. It was major, it played a major part, and that's why we're able to get it done tonight. Perfect, and I know you mentioned the blue moon with the slice of orange and the pizza, but I'm sure you'll parlay this big win into a quick turnaround, right? Take yeah. that energy and just ride with it. Yeah, um, you know, we want to keep the momentum going. Uh, you know, I trust my coaches, whatever we think is best. It's all good. You know, I feel good. Uh, got a couple bumps and bruises. I'm going to make sure that I tend to them. Um, you know, like you guys, like y'all saw, it was a pretty decent blitz in the beginning, but we stay in the gym. We stay ready, so ain't no thing. Thank you. Thanks guys, I'm taking the hat.